Good morning and welcome to Our Savior's Lutheran and Thief River Falls and Reiner Free Lutheran, just east of Goodrich. Thank you for joining us for this online service for those churches this morning. I am pastoral intern Michael Onstead, just leading the announcements this morning. Pastor Alex is here and he'll, he and I have been splitting the service as you've known. Um, so I'm taking announcements this morning. And so those announcements are as follows. The July newsletter, today's bulletin, and the sermon manuscript are available online on our website and can also be mailed to you upon request. Um, this coming Wednesday is Adeline Sletton's birthday. Pastor Alex and I just visited her this week, and she's doing well. She is currently living at Valley Home. Um, she knows that we pray for her every Sunday, so we pray we hope that you would continue to pray for her and consider sending her a birthday card this week. Uh, VBS is coming up August 3rd through 5th. It will be online via Zoom. You can register online at the church's website, OurSaviorsAFLCTRF.com. Um, there's a quarterly meeting for Our Saviors coming up on July 27th at 7 p.m., and we'll be meeting here in the sanctuary so that we can spread out and socially distance ourselves as appropriate during the meeting. Um, the AFLC annual conference is also coming up August 10 through 12, and that will be taking place at the ARC in Osceola, Wisconsin. Registration information can be found at AFLC.org. And now Pastor Alex will begin our worship service. One concluding announcement is that... Uh, I will be speaking at Wilderness Bible Camp near Lake Park, an AFLC camp next week. I'll be back, Lord willing, for the drive-in service, uh, but I will not be here next week for the recording of the in-sanctuary service. So um, pray for pastoral intern Michael Onstead as he prepares his sermon for next week as well as leading the entire service. So we rejoice that uh, God continues to Give us his word as we have it in our hands at home in the Bible and as we receive it even in video services. Um, and we pray that the Lord would soon restore the regular fellowship in, in, in person. Um, our service now opens in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our call to worship is from Psalm 89. Verses 1 through 4, Psalm 89 is a contemplation of Ethan the Ezraite. Ezraite. Verses 1 through 4. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness you shall establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn to my servant David, your seed I will establish forever and build up your throne to all generations. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as you have made this covenant with David and as it has come to pass in the Son of David, your Son, Jesus Christ, whose throne is established forever, we pray to you in his name, extolling your mercies today and forever. With our mouth we make known your faithfulness to all generations, even to ours. You were faithful to deliver the Israelites from Egypt, and you were faithful to provide manna for them in the wilderness. You have delivered us through your Son, Jesus Christ, and you provide for us the bread of life, Jesus himself, as we trust and believe in the word of Christ. We pray, Lord, that you would minister to our hearts through this word in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Our opening hymn is from the Ambassador Hymnal, number 174. As the psalm said, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. So in, in hymn number 174, we will sing of the Lord's mercies as we sing, All hail the power of Jesus' name. Thank you. 
by His grace and crown Him Lord of all. Hail Him who saves you by His grace and crown Him Lord of all. Hail Him, ye heirs of David's line, whom David Lord did call the God in Now bow before the Lord and confess our sins together to him. <clears throat> Almighty God, our, our maker and, and redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, Grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has indeed had mercy upon us and has given us his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. To them that believe on his name, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows upon them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. At this time, I invite you to stand as you're able in honor of the reading of God's word. The epistle lesson comes from Romans chapter 6. Here, the Apostle Paul is writing to the congregation in Rome, and he has just concluded the first five chapters in which he has so clearly laid out the problem of our sin and the solution of God's mercy toward us in Jesus Christ, saving us not according to our works. Our works have led to our spiritual death, but saving us according to his grace alone. And then comes chapter 6, verses one through 19. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. 
but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lusts, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. Here ends the epistle lesson. Excellent words from Romans chapter 6, and the gospel lesson is from John chapter 6, verses 24 through 35. Here Jesus has just fed thousands with bread miraculously. John chapter 6, verse 24 and following. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may do the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate manna in the desert, As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger he who believes in me shall never thirst. Here ends the gospel lesson. At this time, we confess our faith together with the entire Christian church, wherever she may be found, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. turn to our special music this morning. 
done for us by Phil McKenzie and Wanda Vignes. <laughs> Thank you, Phil and Wanda, for that special music. Now is when we would usually have our offering, but being as we are all at a distance, um, we can't do it as per usual, but there are still ways you can give. There is an online giving option found at Our Savior's website, and you can also mail in your offering um, to the church office. But now let us um, respond to our offering by telling God that we are giving him his own, whate'er the gifts may be. All that we have is his alone, a trust from him. We give thee but thy own, whate'er that gift may be.
Now as we prepare ourselves for the message this morning, we sing hymn number 257 in the Ambassador Hymnal, Break Thou the Bread of Life, hymn 257 in the Ambassador Hymnal. morning again. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. At this time, I invite you to stand as you're able in honor of the reading of God's Word. Our sermon text today is really the last half of, Je of Exodus chapter 15 and, and the first half of Exodus chapter 16, but I will be reading from Exodus 16 verses 11 through 15. Here the Israelites have been delivered out of Egypt through the Red Sea and into the wilderness, and they're hungry. Exodus 16, beginning with verse 11. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So it was, that quail came up at evening and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay all around the camp, and when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance, as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, this is your word. 
Your word is truth. We pray that you would sanctify us in the truth, convicting our hearts of our sin where that's necessary and comforting our hearts with the forgiveness of sins that you give to us through the bread of life, Jesus himself. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. When the Israelites had no food, after God had delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh out of Egypt through the Red Sea, God then provided manna. It was like bread, but it was miraculous. God still does provide daily bread for his people, and we still pray for it in the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. His provision for us these days may look less miraculous to us because he so often works through means that are so regular looking. For your health, he, he works through surgeons and nurses, and, and he gives you doctors to diagnose. He gives you pharmacists to administer. He gives you therapists to, to walk along the journey with you. He's still able to heal miraculously, but when he heals through the means of these kinds of people, it's still a gift from him. He's still providing your daily bread. When my son Ephraim was born with premature lungs, he was, he was starved of oxygen, and God's provision for him looked like a hospital transfer. So he was taken from here over to the hospital in Grand Forks where he was cared for. And then the next day, his, his body was suffering from something else. It was a bowel obstruction, which was very serious and life-threatening. And so the, the provision that God had for him was another hospital transfer. We went down to the hospital in Fargo, where he was cared for. And then the larger rescue that Ephraim needed was for a heart defect. When he was only one day old over in Grand Forks, we were informed that Ephraim both had Down syndrome and a heart problem that would require open heart surgery. Ephraim having Down syndrome has been an amazing blessing and joy for our family. With any child, there are challenges and there are joys, and it's the same with Ephraim. The challenges are different, the joys are are different too. They are so rich. What a blessing. Ephraim's heart defect, though, quickly led to a failure to thrive. And when he was three weeks old, he was very nearly suffering from congestive heart failure. So he was flown to Mayo in Rochester. And that time, God's provision for him was a hospital transfer, but then the next morning, open heart surgery. We baptized him that night that he arrived there, unsure if he'd survive the next day. And we commended his body and his soul into God's hands for his care and his keeping. And God provided for Ephraim's soul through baptism, according to God's promises in his word, as God's word is com connected to the water. And thankfully for us, God graciously also provided for his health by giving him a successful surgery and giving him a good recovery. God provided for Ephraim. A couple days after Ephraim was born, my 62-year-old dad entered hospice care after an 11-year battle with prostate cancer. It was his 90th day of hospice at home when dad died. For myself and for my family, it was a great grief uh, to no longer have Dad with us. But for Dad, for him, he had departed and was with Christ. And, and so for him, as Paul says in Philippians chapter 1, it was far better. It was obvious to us that God had provided for Ephraim, right? He had delivered him unto health. Did God provide for my dad? He did. God always provides. But it doesn't always look the same. What has God provided in your life? 
as he provided a congregation, brothers and sisters in Christ that pray for one another, that support one another? Has God provided you friends and family to love? Has he provided work, education? Has he provided you a community to live in and shelter over your head? What did God provide for the Israelites? Well, he sent them Moses and Aaron, uh, who spoke to Pharaoh. God spared them from the plagues in Egypt. God provided a way through the sea on dry land when Pharaoh's army was coming after them. God provided freedom from those ruthless rulers. He provided freedom from the bitter slavery. He's the one that they needed. And so he provided himself. Whenever it looked like it was all over and there was no way of escape, God provided for his people. And so they praised God. I encourage you to read Exodus chapter 15 because there they sang a song praising God, the song of the sea. They sang God praises for defeating their enemy, for rescuing them, for being their strength when they were weak and for how he was true to keep his promises to them. It is an incredible, incredible song that we have the words for in Exodus chapter 15. They were riding a a wave, you could say, if you pardon the Red Sea pun there, uh, a wave of thankfulness and a wave of spiritual excitement. But as you keep reading, the wave, you know, died down and, and the The days were normal, and very quickly the days were hard. There were a lot of Israelites traveling out in a massive group into the wilderness without regular sources of food and water. It didn't take long for them to go from the spiritual mountaintop to the valley, from the peak of the wave to the trough. Exodus 15 verse 22 says that they traveled three days without finding water. And then they finally found water, but it was bitter and they couldn't drink it. And instead of trusting God to provide like he had just provided over and over again, they grumbled against Moses. It would not be the last time that they did that. But graciously, through a miracle, God made that bitter water good to drink. And then he brought the people to a place with 12 springs of water, and Scripture says there were 70 palm trees. This is pretty much Disneyland compared to what they were just at. When life was okay, and when God was clearly providing, they were fine. But when they couldn't see how God was providing, they were forgetful, grumbling, unthankful. Does this sound familiar at all for us? The Israelites left that place of of 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees and and they were out in the wilderness traveling and complaining again when we get to Exodus chapter 16. And here we see God provide for unthankful people. Exodus 16 verses 1 through 3 says, And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, We wish we had died by the hand of the Lord back in Egypt when we sat by the meat pots and had ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out here to the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Well, they are hungry and they are super unthankful. (laughs) They are doubting the goodness of God. God, at this point, he has his every right to give them over to the hardness of their heart, like he eventually did for Pharaoh. But as he was with Pharaoh, he was patient. And for the Israelites here, he keeps giving them opportunities to trust his word. And look at how kind he is to these unthankful people in Exodus 16, verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day. What a thing to say. What a thing to promise. And then what a thing to do. Rain bread from heaven for these people. This is the heart of our providing God. 
He loves you. He provides for you, even when you haven't been thankful for it. He provided salvation for us before we were thankful. Romans 5, verses 6 through 8 says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In the wilderness, the Israelites were sinning and grumbling against Moses instead of trusting against God's promise to provide for them. Yet, while they were still sinners, God gave them manna, bread from heaven. We're sinning when we're not loving God with our whole hearts, minds, and with all our strength, and when we're not loving our neighbors as ourselves. And yet, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. The point is that before we were thankful, God provided. When Jesus was talking in, in the gospel lesson from John chapter 6, some people wondered if he was the real deal, and they wanted him to prove by some miracle that he was legit. And they said in John 6 verse 31, our fathers ate manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. They wanted Jesus to continually provide manna or, or something remarkable like that to convince them that he could be trusted. But Jesus wants them to take him at his word. He wants them to believe the word of the Lord. He knows that doing a miracle will only serve to maybe give them a spiritual high. And, and just like the Israelites, though, they would forget about it and, and begin to grumble as soon as things ceased being easy and given. Instead of giving them a miracle at this point, like, like bread from heaven for a meal, which he really had just previously done by giving thousands bread. At this point, Jesus gives them something better. Jesus tells them to believe in him since he is the true bread of life. In John 6, verse 32, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Eating that manna in the wilderness for the Israelites gave them another day of life. But for us, believing in Jesus, who is the true bread of life from heaven, provides not just another day of life, but unending days of life, eternal life. Later, Jesus said in John 6, verse 47 and following, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Jesus is the bread of life. To believe in him is to eat the bread of life and be provided for. What does God provide for you through this true eternal bread of life, through his son, Jesus Christ? He gives you forgiveness. He gives you love. He gives you eternal life. He gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit who lives within you and produces fruit in your life. Love for others. Joy in his salvation. He gives you love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, and God have mercy to grow in us these fruits of the Spirit. He gives you also a heart to forgive others, knowing in your heart, what it is to be forgiven. He gives you a heart to serve others, seeing in God's word how Christ has served you. He gives you hope even in the midst of suffering. God gives us Jesus 
And Jesus is the bread of life. So as one whom Jesus has saved, you, Christian, who believe, what do you need to help you through your hard times when you're not riding that spiritual wave or standing on that mountaintop anymore? You need a regular meal. What you need is the regular meal of the bread of life. You need Jesus every day. You need fellowship and community in the body of Christ. Whatever you do, seek Christ. Rely on Christ. And don't trust in your own feelings or momentum from a spiritual experience to stay strong in the faith. It wasn't you who saved you, and it's not you who will provide for you in the wildernesses that you face. Thank God for the spiritual experiences that he gives us and the joy and the, the fellowship that we have. But let us rely on the regular bread of life which he feeds us. God saved the Israelites from slavery under Pharaoh. And he has saved me from slavery too. From slavery to sin, slavery to death from slavery to the devil. And when we're set free from sin by faith in Jesus, we're not just free from everything, like we're our own gods or something. Claiming that you're free to do whatever you want is really admitting to everyone that you have become a slave to your own desires. Rather, we've been set free to serve Christ. I commend to you the newsletter article for the month of July on our website from pastoral intern Michael Onsted, which speaks very clearly and eloquently of our freedom in Christ. We are still servants, but we're no longer to be slaves to sin. Instead, we serve God. We want to do whatever he commands. We want to be slaves of God, to serve out of love and thankfulness for how he has listened to our cry, how he's rescued us through Christ, and how he still provides for us, even if it looks different in each case. As the epistle lesson from Romans 6, verses 16 through 18 says, do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as an obedient slave, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed and having been set free from sin have become slaves of righteousness. God has freed us from something, and he's freed us for something. In Christ, we're free from slavery to sin and freed for loving our neighbors for God's glory, according to his gracious will. God has provided salvation for us through Jesus Christ. This is, this is purely a gift given to you before you were even thankful for it. The ways that God provides for you may be miraculous, like the manna and the quail, or maybe they'll come through more regular-looking means, or maybe we won't see them until glory. We walk by faith, not by sight, after all. But he always provides for his people according to his gracious will, in life and in death. And as we thank God, for his gifts, and as he works through us to provide for our neighbors. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We will now turn to hymn number 259 in the Ambassador Hymnal, which is another uh, him kind of like the one before the sermon, Break Thou the Bread of Life. This hymn is, O Bread of Life from Heaven, which would be, you know, commonly sung at our Saviors on a communion Sunday.
But on this day when we are reflecting on the manna given by God and the true bread of life from heaven, Jesus Christ himself, let's sing together, O bread of life from heaven. Join with me in our closing prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your provision. We thank you for your daily, your provision for our daily bread, and whether it be miraculous means or ordinary means, as Pastor Alex mentioned. We thank you especially for our spiritual provision in Christ. We thank you for saving us and delivering us from our sin, setting us free so that we may be servants of you and not slaves to our sin. Now, Lord, we turn our attention to those in our congregation for whom we pray. We pray for Wayne and Carol and their daughter, Christy. We pray for Chuck and Wanda, for Dana, for Rachel, for Bev, for Nathan, for Sandy, for Irene, for Jan, for Adeline, for Don, for Lenore, for Rose and Carol and Ed and all those servicemen and women who are serving. We pray also for the people of Reiner. We pray for Jessica, for Judith, for Peter, for Rodney and Patty, for Dorothy, for Douglas, for Jack and Tabitha, Julia, Chloe, Emmett, Bruce, Cole, John and Amy and their family, Hulda, Georgia, and Muriel. We pray for our country, Lord, in these strange times. We pray for our leaders, pray for our president and government officials, pray that you would be with them, guide them, and give them wisdom to lead in this strange and weird time. Pray for us who are under them, pray that we would give them grace and that we would follow them to the best of our ability. We pray for those who are unsaved and have not heard the gospel in this country, Lord. We pray that you would Rise up workers for the harvest, that the gospel may be brought to them and, they may, may, and that they may come to repentance and faith in you. And now we pray all these things in your name and we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.